The pipeline of cold air continues to surge south through the Great Lakes area into the northeastern U.S. and out west looking a little bit stormy. Switching over to the infrared imagery, we have three major waves. One is in the Four Corners area, the other up there in North Dakota. You can kind of see that little comma shape right there. And the other is off the screen out over Oregon. The cold air advection stratocumulus right in this area and the tops are very bright for cold advection stratocumulus. That's indicating very cold air just up off the surface. And we can take a look at a forecast QT. We'll drop it over Mansfield, Ohio, and sample that air mass. And there you go. There's that cold profile all the way up to about 7,000 feet. And that's where we're topping out the stratocumulus temperatures down to about minus 12 Celsius. And above that, we have the warm sector. That's being undercut by the cold air down beneath. Okay, enough of that. Let's take a look at our surface chart early this evening. High pressure moving into Illinois, centered across the Springfield area. On the east side, we still have that northerly flow in place and considerable lake effect snow from Lake Superior all the way down towards Lake Erie and Ontario. The frontal system, which has plagued the Appalachians in the northeastern U.S., for the past few days has moved on off to the east into the Canadian Maritimes. So they're getting some heavy rain in southeastern Nova Scotia. The cold front trails back into Florida, a few thunderstorms popping up along the length of that front and out over the Gulf Stream area. Along the Gulf Coast, we have offshore flow, 50s at uh, 4 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Eastern, and it is going to be another cold night. Heading out to Texas, we're already developing that return flow. Winds are out of the south, but you can see by those dew points around 27, 26, it is dry. We're not picking up that tropical air out over the Gulf. The only place getting that is in the lower Rio Grande Valley, pretty much right in this area here, Corpus Christi to Brownsville, and Laredo still only at 30 degrees for a dew point. So we're not going to get much of that moisture up north. The next front is already on its way through the Four Corners area. Not quite as strong as what we had a few days ago, but we are getting some snow showers out around Cedar City to Page and down towards Flagstaff. There is a moderate push of cold air back behind it. Northerly flow, but temperatures are a little bit mild. 40 degrees there at Tonopah, 64 around Sacramento. Yeah, that's, that's not very cold, but... Here's the next disturbance showing up as a thickness ring pattern, if you want to call it that, just concentric thickness lines. That kind of marks that a pocket of upper level cold air. Heading up north, a little bit of freezing rain around Prince Albert, snow back down south towards Minot. Heading up to Alaska, still getting that atmospheric river, working on the southeastern coast, and you can see those temperatures are quite warm up into the mid 40s. Further up north, stationary front near the Brooks Range. Some cooler air north of that, but fairly mild 20s and teens. The true cold air is still out east. The coldest air mass that I find is Pond Inlet in Baffin Island, minus 15 at this hour. But as you go down towards Iqaluit, it is fairly mild, 21 degrees. So we're not dealing with any brutally cold air at least not at this time right now. And even down there in Canada on the prairies, just 30s to 20s, and this little band of teens where we have some wet bulbing taking place. And then further out east, another little hang back low, that's what we used to call that in forecast school. Uh, it's detached from the main area of warm air down to the south. It's actually an occlusion but it is producing a pocket of unstable weather, snow showers, and that links up with the cold advection lake effect precipitation out over the Great Lakes. And this is a look at that cold air advection, stratocumulus and cumulus. As the day goes on, you can see those towers really build up. 
right through this area. Those are shallow, but definitely vertical cloud forms producing some heavy snow showers. And if you look around at that pattern and watch it over time, you'll sometimes find little disturbances rippling through the flow. I don't see anything obvious there, but if you look for long enough, you probably will find it. Then as we switch over to the infrared imagery, it looks pretty flat, and that's because the temperature there on those cloud tops is rather uniform. If we use some enhancement to bring that out, you can see a little bit of structure emerge there. But we're pretty much just looking at the tops of these clouds, and I would say where we have the darker shades, like right here, that's probably where some of the heavier precipitation is falling. So there and there. So you can kind of use this a little bit like radar to find the heavier snow showers. Here's what the surface chart looks like at the shower. The snow is not very widespread, mostly confined to the coastal regions. And inland, some pretty good temperature dew point spreads, 8 degrees there. As you go south, 15 degrees. So the snow as it falls is going to be a little bit more Virga-like in that area. But earlier in the day, going back in time, the snow was a little bit more widespread, hitting places like Grand Rapids and Houghton Lake. So that stuff up in Michigan not really being driven by any upper-level dynamics that's mostly going to be convective instability. There's those three waves we were talking about, and this one's going to have the most immediate effects. That's going to head into Texas tomorrow. There it is. That's going to link up with a little bit of moisture. As I mentioned, the return flow not all that great, and a little bit of synergy going on with this other wave in Minnesota, and that'll be producing some snow as well up there. And taking that through the rest of the sequence, this is going to be a very progressive wave already in Pennsylvania by Tuesday. And then we watch this other system in California. And another wave dropping down the backside of this trough. Let's see what's happened with that. And that looks like channeled flow. So mostly jet max driven. So with that, we're going to be looking at the left front quad, for example, for the strongest upward vertical motion. And then our attention shifts to the southwestern U.S. and also up to Alberta. Then going into the, the remainder of the week, there's definitely enough upper-level energy in these troughs here to produce periods of upward motion through the northern plains and the Midwest. So this is going to be a very favorable pattern for snow showers. Not very heavy. Just talking about a couple of inches, but it definitely will have an impact so it does look like some active weather. Let's take a look at the temperature extremes. I went ahead and skipped most of the work week. There's nothing to see from Monday through Thursday. Temperatures near seasonal normals, but Friday is when things change. You can see records being broken from Casper down to Goodland up to Mobridge, all below zero except for Goodland there at 8 degrees. And there's how Saturday looks. Pretty clear evidence of a plateau high across the Great Basin area and the Canadian polar air mass covering much of the central U.S., teens all the way down towards Tennessee. So that probably implies 20s down towards Texas and 30s towards the Gulf Coast. And remember, a good way to see these Arctic outbreaks is going to be the 850 millibar temperature. That kind of gets rid of some of the diurnal effects, and it filters out the shallowest air masses. So what we see here is another shot of cold air moving through the Dakotas, heading into Iowa, Missouri. And there's the next surge for Thursday. That's it right there. You can see more of it stacked up into Nunavut. We'll see if that makes it south. Going into Thursday and Friday... Yeah, some of that cold air from Nunavut makes it into Minnesota for Saturday. But you can see it recurving cyclonically, and that'll bring most of the cold air into the Great Lakes in the northeastern U.S., not so much for the southern U.S. And there it goes. And we look up north and see if more of it's stacked up, and looks like we may be recharging up there a little bit. That's some very cold air. 850 millibar temperatures near minus 32. 
And that is extremely cold, but it's going to be tough getting that south because we have a positive EPO pattern and the positive PNA is broken down. So this is going to be more of a zonal flow. It's not conducive to bringing down much Arctic air, but, you know, we'll see how things change. This is 240 hours out. I remember going a little bit further into the future. The GFS was trying to set up a little atmospheric river out in this area and charge the snowpack and get more of that Arctic air going and coming south. But really, that's pretty far out. We're not going to worry about that until later this week. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. Hope you had a great weekend. We'll see you back here tomorrow for the supporter edition of Forecast Lab. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.